boy KC Fowler, one half for the Fowler podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast, bringing you yet another Melanin Warrior. Today we're talking about Amina. Amina, the queen of Zarya, was born sometime in 1533 in Zazao, which is current day Zarya in North Nigeria. She was the daughter of Bakwa Taranku, 22nd ruler and founder of the Zazu kingdom. She was the oldest of three siblings. The Zazu kingdom was a peaceful kingdom, earning their wealth in trading leather, cloth, cola, which is some sort of uh, nut that's produced by the cola tree and different kind of metals and even horses. At a young age, Amina's grandfather noticed her talent and skills as a, as a leader. So he allowed her to attend meetings of the state and gave her much of the knowledge she would, you know, need to be successful and be a great leader herself. So at the age of 16, she became heir apparent to her mother. Unfortunately, her parents died and her brother Karama became the ruling king. At that time, she had an excellent military skills that allowed her to be the leading warrior of the Zatsu Cavalry, which was really, really dope for a woman at that time. She gained many honors and managed to assure respect from the military. So 10 years after her brother became king, unfortunately, he died, and that made her queen of Zazu. Three months after becoming queen, she set out on several expeditions and continued to expand her domain. Her army consisted of 20,000 foot soldiers and 1,000 cavalry troops. Woo! Hate to run into them. That were well-trained and fierce. One of their first announcements to her was the call to them to say, hey, we sharpen your weapons, get ready. We about to go do this. The army pushed on until the Zazu kingdom was bigger than it ever had been. Due to the size of her kingdom and growth of trade, it is said that she introduced her people to metal armor and helmets for the Zazu kingdom, which at that time, nobody really had armor and things like that. They more or less just went out there with their shields and everything and just fought like that. But she actually introduced, um, which is considered a foreign concept to her people. So let's keep moving. She was also the one to build the walls around her kingdom, which spanned about 15 kilometers that made a political statement of their wealth and power. The walls were also of strategic importance. It came to be known as Gunwara Amina or Amina's Wall. These walls continue to be built throughout the years to protect villages and cities, and they are all called Amina's Walls, which is, you know, speaking volumes to her legacy by calling, they still call it that to this day. Um, so unfortunately, Queen Amina died at the age of 34, becoming the first man and woman to rule an African kingdom. In honor of her accomplishments, a statue of her was built and placed in the National Arts Theater in Nigeria and many schools are named after her. I would really, really love to go check this out. One day, hopefully I can get to go to Nigeria and you know, Melanin Warriors podcast will be in full effect in Nigeria one day. Uh, Queen Amina, a Melanin warrior who ruled with both benevolence and ferocity and carried out her ambitions leading her kingdom to prosper. This is truly an inspirational story and a testament to the strength and wisdom of all of all our Melanin sisters out there. A depiction of her story in the form of a movie, guys, actually drops on Netflix November the 4th. And me, for one, I'm extremely excited. Man, I cannot wait to watch this movie. I've been waiting on some sort of, uh, you know, back in the day, medieval war type, sword type movie. That's just us. And we're finally getting that in the form of the warrior queen, Amina. So... It's been another episode, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, follow on Instagram, Facebook, and um, TikTok, guys. Melanin underscore lion on TikTok. That's the TikTok. Y'all check that out. And I always remember, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. It's your boy.